So let's look at the New York Times piece on the menopause queen's gambit about Dr. Mary Claire Haver. And let's go through this article bit by bit. And I want to show you something. This is Dr. Mary Claire Haver, The Pause Life. She's tagged below. And this article is written by Danielle Friedman. And it came out October 30th, 2024. Dr. Haver is a menopause specialist now focusing in on menopause care. If you are not aware that if you are a woman who is going through the menopause transition, by the way, menopause is 365 days since your last period, but perimenopause begins seven to 10 years prior. And you may never know you're in perimenopause in the beginning, not until late perimenopause, because you see, it comes in like a whisper and many people are not educated in this knowledge not even doctors. You see, the United States has only about 2,300 providers certified in menopause medicine. The governing body is the Menopause Society, which was formerly known as the North American Menopause Society. Now, they are also cited in this article, and the Menopause Society is historically conservative. Dr. Haver is a little more, uh, let's say, liberal, meaning she knows that there's an art and a science, and she is doing evidence-informed medicine, not just evidence-based. Evidence-based means everything that we would do would be proven in science and research for women, but the problem is there is a lack of research for women in the perimenopause transition, let alone menopause, let alone postmenopause. so she's using evidence-informed and she is being progressive. So there are many, many needs for women in menopause and she has several businesses. Now, this is part of the story you need to know. Now let's go through the article. Many women struggle to find clinicians who are experienced and informed enough to guide them through the transition. This is why people follow menopause specialists on TikTok. The void has been filled with a thriving crowd of menopause influencers. Let's switch out influencers for educators with Dr. Haver at the helm. And the last two years, she has arguably done more to educate women about menopause than any other public figure through her social media platform and the best-selling book, The New Menopause, which is a New York Times bestseller. She has called out sexism in menopause, demanded increased federal funding for women's health research, and called on medical schools to do better to prepare doctors to care for women beyond their reproductive years. Both publicly and in her private menopause practice, she has crusaded to dispel deep-seated fears about hormone therapy, arguing that it carries a long list of benefits for health and wellness. If this article stops here, it is phenomenal. It is true. Yes, yes. So she's authoritative and empathetic, addressing her followers as if they are not only her patients, but also her friends. Because storytelling matters and having a friend going through the menopause transition matters. We need community. She speaks with urgency, often against a green screen backdrop of a published study, breaking down research simply yet empathetically. Mm -hmm. That's why people love her. Do you know patients are more likely to listen to their doctor if they believe their doctor cares? Hello, she has drawn criticism from the menopause medicine's long-serving guard of doctors for recommending hormones for use as astray from the official medical guidelines. And they say risk harming women. She has built a multi-million dollar wellness business, The Pause Life, selling supplements and diet plans in a way that some of her colleagues find ethically questionable. Several longtime menopause specialists and researchers told the New York Times they believe Dr. Haver embodied both the promise and perils of menopause care's next chapter. But Dr. Larkin states that she is largely doing the right thing and she is the previous uh, president of the Menopause Society. And so the Menopause Society states that the guidelines for hormone usage is what they say it is, which is evidence based. Show me the research that Blah, blah, blah. vasomotor is about the only thing that we know. So anywho, carrying on, Dr. Larkin and the others expressed concern for healthcare providers selling anything, even their own expertise, especially on social media. And they say it is a slippery slope. I'm gonna add my commentary here. This is the future. Talking to people online is the future of creating a community and educating women. Now, in the academic realm, people, don't like to mix money and academics. People don't like to mix medicine and money either. But at some point, people who have brilliant ideas should be able to profit from those ideas since we do live in the US. And healthcare is not free here. 
Sadly, it is not free. And the greatest, smartest practitioners are done with healthcare and are going to cash-based practices so that they can give the quality of care that their people need. There is massive gaps in the women's health care community. There is limited research. And if we were to do only evidence-based, we wouldn't have any care, quite frankly, at the rate we're going. She hears their concerns, but says she is more interested in helping women. And in the hours after the documentary crew left her home, she transitioned into a kind of menopause central command, a buzz with enthusiasm about upcoming plans. She also gets knocked because she talks about the visceral fat, the belly fat, and the pause life about her upcoming fat blasting challenge. So let's read the room here. If you are on social media and you are 40 plus perimenopause and have developed a tire around your belly, are you encouraged by the fact that a doctor hears your concerns about visceral fat and wants to help you? Did they forget that she went and got more training to speak on this topic because she had gaps in her education? Knock it if you want that she ran a fat blasting challenge, but my patients love it, okay? Like they, they love it. My patients ha love having a piece of paper they can print out and a challenge that they can follow because it speaks to them. So meeting people slash patients where they are is delightful. The amount of resources she gives for free amazing because she is being the change in this world and yes she wrote a book the new perimenopause which she sold for 1.4 million good for her and it's a great book she is basically doing the press that needed to be done to debunk the 2002 women's health initiative this should have been done a long time ago so because of the Women's Health Initiative, by 2007, the number of eligible menopausal women taking hormones dropped below 5%. It had previously hovered at about 40% of women that needed hormones were doing it. Now the Menopause Society is saying, nobody in the Menopause Society is gatekeeping hormones. They're saying, this is what the research shows. This is what the good quality research shows. Zoom in here. Good quality research on vasomotor symptoms. How about all the other hundred symptoms? Uh, its most recent guidelines, the Menopause Society urged healthcare providers to drop the term hormone replacement therapy. Basically, the Menopause Society wants to rebrand. They don't want you to think that these hormones are needed for all women. Not all women need to do a replacement. So we're going back to the term hormone therapy or menopause hormone therapy because we don't want you to think that you need them. Now, with that being said, show me the research funding and longevity studies of women in early to late perimenopause prior to reaching menopause when we are in the era of prevention. Show me the studies that we give hormones to women in late perimenopause to help them prevent bone loss, muscle loss, help their quality of life, and all the other host of symptoms. Then show me the women, the controls that don't get that care, make it a long study, show me what they look like 10 years post-menopause. Show me. Oh, it doesn't exist. We don't research hormones prior to reaching menopause because prevention is never an option. While there aren't yet large long-term studies establishing the inarguable benefits of hormones for disease prevention, there eventually will be, and the women shouldn't have to wait decades for better care, which is how long it could take to gather enough evidence to change official guidelines. She frequently suggests the menopause establishment is conservative in its recommendations, denying women critical care that is based on promising, if not definitive, evidence. And she sits in front of patients every day who just want their lives back and they may not be experiencing the specific symptoms listed by the menopause society, but there's been a dramatic shift in the resilience and how they're managing their day-to-day -day activities of their lives. And so now you know why I was grumpy with the New York Times for publishing this article. We need to fund more research. We need to do better. Do better.